Hey, it's Greg Milby, community storyteller for Kentucky's Heartland, and I am joined by the very dapper. Hmm, I know. We'll just pause for a second there and say it. This is my friend. He is retired Brigadier General Jim Iacocca, who not is dapper. part of the Knox Regional Development Alliance, the president of the Knox Regional Development Alliance. And we have had a very busy seven days in the Heartland talking about Fort Knox. And Knox Regional Development Alliance is, man, you guys have just been tearing things up. For our community. So first of all, appreciate all the work that you're doing uh, to bring uh, more soldiers to our community. Well, thank you. It's really, as uh, you've heard me say before, it is really an honor and a privilege to serve this community. Uh, Fort Knox is a wonderful military installation and the community around Fort Knox is a wonderful patriotic community. So it's just a privilege to be here. Thank you. So, um, you know, we've, we've, media reports have been out there about this, this new, new uh, headquarters coming to Fort Knox. And and we've seen some of the, I guess, some of the Cliff Notes version of what this means to our community. So, first of all, it's called, it's the fourth headquarters, but it's called Fifth Corps. That's correct. So, give the, me that military explanation for this. Sure. The Army has had multiple Corps headquarters over time, but with downsizing, it settled on three Corps headquarters. First Corps at, Fort, uh, at Joint Base Lewis McCord in, uh, in Washington State. Uh, then 3rd Corps at Fort Hood in Texas, and then 18th Airborne Corps at Fort Bragg. So when they talked about standing up a 4th Corps, this was the 4th Corps that the Army was standing or reestablishing, but the name of the Corps is 5th Corps. It is the 5th Corps headquarters. And uh, the reason they brought back 5th Corps is because of its lineage and its heritage with, with Europe. All right, so we talk about Fort Knox a lot, and Fort Knox has changed over the years, you know, with BRAC, the base realignment and closures. Um, a lot of folks talk about armor, and you hear that all the time, and I know somebody's going to put that on this video, bring back armor. That's not going to happen. I, as I've said before, mm -hmm. the armor center will not return in my lifetime. There you go. Now, but Fort Knox has positioned itself very well to be a, it's, it's a leadership post. So I think, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Fort Knox, especially since last Tuesday, how great this is and, and how great Fort Knox is. And I just want to remind everybody that Fort Knox was pretty great before this announcement on Tuesday as well. Uh, we, when the Armor Center left and, and Brack took different effects, the, the personality of Fort Knox changed. But based on the units that are there, United States Army Recruiting Command, United States Army Cadet Command, United States Army Human Resources Command, I'll just stay with those three for right now, it really is the strategic center of excellence for the, the strength of the Army, the enlisted strength, the officer strength, and then once they're in the Army, the management of, mm -hmm. of that strength. The chief of staff of the Army likes to say that, you know, people are the most important thing in, in the Army, and, and all that starts uh, and is managed at Fort Knox. And then, of course, the other commands that we have there, the 1st Theater St Sustainment Command and 1st Army Division East, provide unique capabilities to to the army and then the reserve commands that are there all army aviation all reserve army aviation is command commanded out of fort knox uh, 100th division which is professional development and the 84th uh, reserve training division which provides unit training so really fort knox's importance to the army was great is great but it enters and i think mayor duvall said it pretty well we enter a unique class of military installations when you have a core headquarters on mm -hmm. your post. So I think it just makes a great place even greater. You know, this interview was going well until you gave Mayor J.J. Duvall a compliment and it just, uh, hopefully it doesn't spiral downhill from well, here. I'll give a shout out then to all our mayors in the region. They're all wonderful people mm -hmm. and uh, their support, but I think only I've seen Mary Duvall quoted in the paper talking about the yeah. court. So what does this mean for our community? So we're one, I know we're talking uh, 635 uh, soldiers coming, but that's that number is a lot larger than that at the end of the day, correct? Sure, because that's, that's 635 soldiers in in the command. And uh, based on the, com the, the seniority of the command, most of them are going to have families. And so you've got spouses and children that, that will be coming in there as well. So the number is much larger than 635 people coming to the region. That's just the soldiers in the headquarters. So does that also bring contractors that work with the unit as well? I think there'll be potential down the road for increased contractor activity 
in the region based on the core headquarters being here, yes. Now, when we talk these 635 and you talk about the hundreds of families that are coming, they're not necessarily living on post. There are a lot of these are going to be buying homes in our community and living in our community, not just on post, correct? So about 70% of um, the military population lives outside the gates and lives in the communities. And so if you look at that, then 70% 70, 70 of this community, of this new headquarters will live out in the community. And yes, um, some of them will rent homes, some of them will buy homes, but there'll be a lot of, of uh, influx into the housing and the schools off post as well hmm. as on post. All right. So what, what does the headquarters do? I know, I know we've got a, I mean, we've got a three-star general coming, which Correct. is, it's been how many years since we've had a three-star on post? It's I, been quite a few years, Well, right? I can't, yeah, when the Sessions Command left, uh, that was the last time we had a three-star general on post. So what exactly does the headquarters do? So what Fifth Corps headquarters is is uh, tasked to do is to provide direction, command, and control, and oversight for uh, Army units in, in Europe. Okay. That's and so a... that while they'll have 635 people here, they're going to maintain a 200 person uh, operational command post forward somewhere in, in, in Europe. Okay. So I know like the first sustainment command, I mean, there, we have quite a few soldiers here, but That's we correct. have a lot over in theater doing, uh, doing stuff all the time, it seems like. So, yes. uh, so there's, there's a lot of movement on yes. Fort Knox. So what, as, as with Knox Regional Development Alliance, and you know, and we're talking about economic development in this community, I know this is just a number that I've heard thrown out there, $2.6 billion impact for our community. So, that's what Knox generates right now. Knox generates right now a $2.6 billion uh, impact to the community. Now, as I, I've, I've said before, based on the commands that are at Fort Knox, that $2.6 billion passes through Fort Knox. It doesn't all stay in this region mm -hmm. based on the worldwide responsibilities of, of recruiting command and HRC and the nationwide responsibilities of cadet command. A lot of that money goes to other places as well. But it is $750 million in payroll, and that stays right here. Uh, and and that's the, the, those numbers are official numbers. Mm -hmm. What I can tell you is unofficially, with some calculations that we've done, we think the uh, economic impact, the, the, the payroll compensation will increase by close to $50 million wow. with these 635 people coming in. Now, that's, those are not official numbers. Uh, right. Th those are not approved We're by the We're not going to hunt you down if, if, if those numbers, aren't 100% right. 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 We're right. good. We're good. Yeah. I mean, I could even put a disclaimer at the bottom, but I won't because I okay. trust you. All right. Well, thank you. I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, it's too close to Valentine's Day <laughs> to be staring in your eyes. So um, with this, as our community gets ready, because, I mean, this has turned around pretty quick. It's not like in other units you're like, okay, they're coming in a year. They're going to be here in two years. I mean, they're going to be here in the fall. Yes. So what for businesses in our community and, and real estate agents and, and people that, uh, that are thinking about this, what do they need to know? What do they need to do to be ready for these soldiers? Okay, a couple things I want to say up front, though, is unlike most people's experience in the community when we've had this kind of influx of people, they are not coming from one specific location. Human Resources Command is going to put people on orders to come to Fort Knox from all across the army. So these people aren't coming from one post or you know two posts or three posts. They're coming from everywhere to, to fill this headquarters. So they'll, they'll be coming in as you know mm -hmm. uh, individual assignments. And some will, will come sooner than others. The army's intent, I believe, is to have uh, a certain initial operational capability by one October. I think officially the Army has said some t before the end of 2020 they, they, they intend to stand this up. Don't know what percentage of fill it will be at. Don't know if it'll be 300, 400, 500 people. Um, I don't think, I personally don't think it'll all be 635 people by, uh, by the end of this fiscal year. But I think the immediate message that I would say to the community is keep doing what you're doing. Be supportive of Fort Knox, be supportive of soldiers, be supportive of their families, and just keep doing what you're doing. A lot of the heavy lifting mm -hmm. on bringing Fifth Corps in is on the Army and Fort Knox. And, you know, we stand ready to assist the Post any way we can. Uh, we are working, uh, KRDA is, is working with the Post to create 
a community website uh, that we, we actually should have done much earlier. Uh, it's not 5th Corps specific, but it'll be a place for those soldiers coming in with 5th Corps can go to, a community website that will help them find places to live and schools and uh, a little bit about health care and about the community, maybe where they want, they want to live. Mm -hmm. So we, we are developing that now, and, and, and we'll have that uh, hopefully uh, operational by the end of March to uh, help facilitate people's uh, arrival to our great community. Well, I know it's an exciting time. Um, some people didn't know exactly what it meant, but we knew it was big. It is because big. of all the, all the, all the, uh, I guess the press coverage we've had about this. So you've been working on this for a while, though, right? I've known for several months now that the Army was looking at standing up an additional corps. Uh, I've known that probably eight or nine months now. I didn't know where it was going to be. I, I, I got rumors that Fort Knox was on, on the short list, but then in December, you know, all the Army posts said, hey, here's, here's the mix. And the Army mm -hmm. had 31 posts to look at. They narrowed it down to three or four pretty quickly, and, and Knox was one of those. But, but really, you know, did the Knox Regional Development Alliance help? We did. You know, we, we helped with language and understanding with our congressional delegation. Um, we, we certainly were working with them but huge kudos to the, the leadership team at Fort Knox who built this packet and answered the questions back and forth that the Army was asking all the installations that were making that final cut. Mm -hmm. And it's really the leadership at Fort Knox that, that really did certainly the lion's share of, of getting this done. Um, and I think, you know, KRDA was involved. We certainly greased the skids and, and we helped. I won't say we had no role in it, but mm -hmm. I do not want to diminish the... The, the, the role of the team at Fort Knox and, and of course, the, the impact that our congressional delegation uh, helped and, and, and the, the impact that they had to bring this here. Yeah, well, we're wonderful excited team, about it. Wonderful team effort. And yeah. also, you know, just I also don't want to diminish the uh, just the involvement of this community because without the wonderful support uh, that this community, and when I say this, I am talking about the greater Fort Knox community, mm -hmm. but I'm also talking about the Commonwealth of Kentucky that did reciprocal licensing for military spouses to be able to find jobs quickly and, and use the licensing that they had from another state for their professions here. All those things went into the calculus that the Army used. Hey, where are we going to send this place? Where are we going to send this Corps? And they wanted to send it to a place that, that, that recognized the value of the entire family. There you go. Well, I mean, our community is growing. It's great. Uh, we're excited about it. We hopefully uh, think we hope that you are, too. Uh, I appreciate the work you've done. I appreciate the work of Fort Knox. And I'm just excited to see the growth and the continued growth of this area that we call Kentucky's Heartland. So, well, thank so you good to much. see you, my friend. And we'll, we'll keep uh, we'll keep you posted as, as things develop and we'll make sure the community knows what we know. And when there's events where the uh, the community can help or attend, we'll make sure that that word gets out. You know, we love having Fort Knox here, and if you ever need to know what happens when treasures of Fort Knox uh, stay put, this guy right here. I mean, he was one of those guys. He retired out of Knox and, and decided to stay here, and we're so grateful that you did that. Well, you're very Appreciate kind, it. and I feel like I'm the fortunate one. Thank you. All right. He's the president of the Knox Regional Development Alliance, retired Brigadier General Jim Iacocca. I'm Greg Milby, community storyteller, and this is Kentucky's Heartland.